Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today, let's make an upside down brisket. If you guys are fans of this channel, you know that I like to smoke my barbecue traditional Texas style. So briskets are fat side up. And even for the folks that say, well, if it's on a pellet grill, it's got to be fat side down um, to deflect the heat. That's not true. Um, I've proven that in my uh, pellet grill briskets that I've put out before. But you know, when I first started cooking brisket, I came from the competition world and those guys, you know, smoke meat side up. Um, we've also done videos talking about the differences in meat side up and fat side up. But you know, the inspiration for this video today is I still see lots of folks on social media cooking briskets meat side up. And it's probably because some of the people that teach come from that comp world. So, you know, what the heck is an upside down brisket? It's a meat side up brisket, um, if you ask us here in Texas. So I thought it'd be cool to go back and just do one like I used to do it years ago and just kind of remind myself what it was like and see what I think of it. I haven't done this in years and years and years. And we're gonna bring in a couple methods that we haven't done in our normal videos and just talk about it at the end, you know, see if it's something that I don't mind doing or something that, you know, reminds me of why I like to do it the way I like to do it. So here we go. First things first, we're actually gonna inject this brisket. You guys haven't seen me do that in forever, but we have an injection and you don't have to use my injection, but um, I get asked about our injection all the time. Like, when should you inject? So, well, let me show you. A great time to inject would be when you have like a lower grade of meat potentially, or maybe you just want that super beefy flavor. This is one cup of water, by the way. Uh, my injection is one cup of water to a third cup um, of injection. So what, you know, what is injection or why would you do it? Well, it's a big beefy flavor. It's kind of like beef ramen. It's also got phosphates in it that help, you know, it's for moisture retention things like that. It's gonna shake this up really good. You don't have to warm it up, some people do. I'm gonna pour it back in a more shallow vessel because it's just easier to uh, fill the needle that way. And then I'm just using a cheap needle. Uh, this just came out of a Creole injection that I got at Academy. And let's bring in the brisket. So I've trimmed this brisket. By the way, this one came from the store yesterday like this, like this flexible. Um, so what I've done here is I've just basically taken the edge off the entire outside to clean up the oxidation. I've removed the hard fat. Um, I've hardly removed anything from the top and I've taken the fat side down to a quarter inch. So this is what it looks like. So I inject first and then I season. So fill your needle up, your syringe up, I should say. And then what I do is I look at the grain. It's tough for you guys to see the grain is going this direction. So what I'll do is I'll inject with the grain and I mostly will inject in the flat. I don't always inject the point because there's a lot of fat in there. So I'm kind of going in a one by one pattern and I'm gonna inject and I'm gonna, as I, as I push the plunger down, I'm actually pulling the needle out. Um, no different than you would inject like a turkey you guys are in the splash zone up there. So again, about a one by one pattern and you'll see it kind of puff up. You don't want to over inject, but this does give a really nice big beefy flavor. And honestly, I have not like done this in years, like I said earlier. And don't worry about this excess that comes out on top. That's completely fine. Now, I didn't use the entire cup. I used a little over half of it. I'm gonna preserve this. I'm gonna put it in the fridge. And then when I get to the wrap stage, I'm actually gonna put this back in my wrap. So hang on to that and let's get to seasoning. So we're gonna do our traditional two to one, holy cow to holy gospel. This is our beef rub. It's mainly, it's salt, pepper, garlic. Um, and then our holy gospel, just a little topper on top. You could just do this. You could do salt and pepper. You could do, you know, your favorite uh, brisket rubber combination. I'm gonna start on the back. I go heavier with holy cow. It's about two to one or maybe three to one. Just depends on what you like. Holy cow's pepper forward. And uh, that's what I like on brisket. So that's what we're doing. Now 
and then I'm just going to come across it with a little Holy Gospel. You know, I've talked about this a lot. This is a great combination. It's very popular in competition. That's where I uh, came up with it. So, and it's a winner. Our customers like it, so that's why I'm showing it to you. Going to just kind of pat that in, flip it over, and repeat the process on the meat side. All right, that's good with me. Pat it on here. You know, I love to do this in the evening and let it sit all night and cook it the next day. Uh, video sake, like I always say, we're gonna let it adhere. So we're gonna give it 15, 20 minutes. Uh, with the injection in here, it's wet on top already. The seasoning sticks really quickly. Uh, but I'm gonna give it, you know, about 15, 20 minutes, like I said. And I'm gonna head over here and I'm gonna get the Traeger Ironwood at 250 degrees. I'll see y'all back here when it's time to cook. beefy. So let's talk about the cook. We're going super simple with this. 250 degrees all the way through. Different than my normal method. So we are going to cook this for seven to eight hours looking for color and internal temp in the 170s. Then we're going to wrap it in a pan with foil and the injection and we're going to continue at 250 until it's tender which is going to be a couple more hours. So what we've got here I have a brisket that we put on earlier and it's at the eight hour mark and it's in the mid 170s. It's a much smaller brisket before I pull it out. Feels weird to pick it up because I'm grabbing the fat underneath. I'm not used to that. But you can see the look is very different. This was 11 pounds raw, by the way, and I trimmed down a couple pounds. So it's, it's a pretty small fella, but you can see it's, it's really mahogany um, on top. You can actually see the grain going this direction. And here's what we're gonna do. We are going to pour the uh, injection over it, give a little moisture. Okay. And we're gonna foil it up. We're gonna put it back in. Now we've also had another one cooking that's at the next stage and it's on a Traeger just out of shot. So I'm gonna put this one back in and I'm gonna go over and grab that one and then bring in the final product. All right, so here we've got one that cooked about two more hours and it got to 203, 204, um, in the flat, probe tender, and then I hit keep warm on the Traeger, which goes down to 165 degrees, and I let it sit in there for two hours uh, to kind of chill out. But you're obviously, you know, you're, you're steaming or kind of braising the meat when you're wrapping it, and you guys know that's not what I typically do today. It's, like I said, an older method. Um, got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of that injection and brisket juices in here. I'll hang on to that. Um, when people are first doing brisket, I'm like, hey, you should foil it. Don't wrap in paper, and then um, you'll never dry it out because you'll have all of those juices. But, you know, still looking really wet. Uh, the grain's running this direction. I actually made a little slice here to know which way the, the grain was running because you want to slice against the grain. So even though I've let it cool down a little, I'm still going to give this on the counter here about 20 minutes, uh, and then we're going to slice into this and take a look at it. All right, I'm really gonna kick it old school. I'm going to my old method of uh, an electric knife. This is a Mr. Twister from Academy. Yes, it's a fishing knife, but why would you not use that on your briskets? Uh, I mentioned I made a little knock over here against the grain so I would know the direction the grain is running because after you cook a brisket, it's actually pretty difficult to see which way the grain is going. So here we go. And by the way, I'm cutting on a disposable cutting board because I don't want to use an electric knife on my fancy rosewood blocks to, to scuff them up. All right, I'm gonna go get a piece like right out of the middle. And you can see like, 
super tender, still, uh, you know, still cooked the same. You know, don't be afraid to get in here and use any, any juices that you have. It's got, it's got a pretty smoke ring on it as well, which is typical when you do a, a meat up brisket. This was cooked with meat church pellets on a Traeger, oak and hickory. Um, I'll usually give it, you know, just the little slightest little pop, make sure it pulls apart nice and easy. And then, hey, it's time to give it a test. Beefy, that's for sure. I mean, it's still, you know, amazing beefy brisket taste, which I feel like a lot of the country, like I said, still does this method. And, you know, look, when you get the, when you see these pictures on Instagram or wherever, and you see that sexy smoke ring, it's kind of like in a competition box. It's tough to argue against that. Um, if I'm going to be honest, like, do I like it this way? I do like it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still brisket. It's a good brisket. It's got great seasoning on it. It's got great flavor from the Traeger. Anybody's going to like it. Um, I don't think it's the best method. I'm glad I did it. It's been, it's been a long time since I've done one like this. And, you know, if I were competing, I would kind of do something like this. I would have trimmed it more narrow. Um, there's a few other things I would have done. Um, and then that's what you turn in, but that's why I say, like, look, no shade. Competition barbecue is not the best barbecue in the world. Uh, Texas barbecue joints on the Texas Monthly Top 50, that's the best barbecue in the world. Um, and it's not really all that debatable, in my opinion. So nothing wrong with this. You can get it done on a Saturday. Um, and if this is the way you want to do it, I always say, as long as you like the end product and you're happy with how it turns out, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what I think or what your buddy thinks. Um, you know, this is a great way to do it. But I think I'm going to stick to my traditional um, Texas brisket method um, or my, you know, ultimate pellet grill brisket recipes. Those are, you know, those methods of fat up. I just prefer the fat rendered on top of the brisket. I think when you trim that fat down to that quarter inch with uh, peppery seasoning on top, smoked with post oak or, you know, same pellets we use today um, for that matter. I just think that leads to what I enjoy as the best bite in barbecue. Um, for myself, but nothing wrong with this uh, really popular method and you know, like I said glad I did it I see a lot of people a lot of my peers out there still cooking it this way But I'm gonna spend my career trying to convince y'all to go do it uh, the Texas way Which is fat up you guys like what we're doing. We got tons of brisket videos on our channel hit the brisket playlist We'll put a link up here in the corner um, Please like and subscribe to the channel um, hit the alerts so you can you can be um, alerted every week when we drop our straightforward outdoor cooking videos Thanks for watching. See y'all next week.